Hey guys, and welcome back to the Original Strength Podcast. Uh, I've got another special episode for you this week. Uh, we are going to be talking with Uncle Dan John again um, on one of the topics that he real that he really illuminated me with called Easy Strength, and it's actually a book uh, that Dan wrote. Uh, I, I think you co-wrote it with Pavel. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Pablo Sotsilin. And but before we get into that, Dan, I think you have written 14 books. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Um, so out of the 14, what's your favorite book? Just curious. Well, you kind of, it's it's like picking a child, but the one that I like the best would be the last one the most. It's called 40 Years with the Whistle. And the reason I like it so much is a lot of people will ask me like, why I'm so patient with stupid questions. <laughs> you know, all these things, <laughs> all the and it, when you read the stories of my mentors, male, female, uh, and everyone else, uh, you get a sense of uh, how kind people were to me. And I, I try to tell their stories. And, um, you know, Dick Notmy, for example, he and his wife just celebrated 70 years of marriage together. You know, and um, he's still telling me almost every day. Every, I call him about once a month. You know, make sure, you know, this, this, I tell you, Danny, this good eating and this uh, exercise, I think it helps you when you're older. And I'm like, yeah, I think so too, Dick. You know, he's just, uh, <laughs> you know, the, uh, so that would be mine. Um, there's three of them that I try to put together as kind of as a, uh, a classroom text. That's intervention, can you go, and now what? I tried to make those. So intervention is about, well, basically all of training, you know, okay. Uh, but it's it's basically in the book, 10 questions. Are you willing to try something new? That's where the intervention comes from. Can you go is how I assess people. And then the third is now what? Well, you got your goal or you failed. You know, now what? And that's the more the, um, the, the way we would deal with. It's, it's weird to say goal setting because goal setting means so many things to so many different people. But when you failed at the national championships, Part of my job is to say to you, well, now what? You know, or worse in some cases, when you win the national championship, now what? And, well, I don't know. You know, well, to know is not a good way to go through life, you know. Right. So I would say 40 years and then those three, because I just think that there's schools use them as textbooks. And so they mean a lot to me. But from the fan base, it's never let go by far, by far. I, yeah. So all the ones you mentioned, I really love them all. And I, 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 40 years with a whistle is phenomenal um, and and never let go. Um, I, I think that is priceless too from uh, just from just gleaning from your wisdom. But I, from all your books, and it's probably because it's the first one that I really encountered, um, Easy Strength for me oh. uh, totally, totally opened my eyes to uh, training um, from a very simplistic approach and probably easy strength. If I'm being honest, probably actually inspired me to write the book that I wrote called habitual strength. Um, yeah. but, but when I first met you, my first encounter, uh, of, of, of your books was easy strength. And to me, it's phenomenal, especially for, it teaches you how to show up, but I don't, I don't want to tell, uh, can you tell us about what is easy strength? Well, it, it, it really comes down to one quick, hard to understand point, Tim. And this is, I mean, this is the million dollar thing. Why are you going to the weight room? Well, most people go to the weight room to look better naked or look better on the beach. And that's fine. That's bodybuilding. That's hypertrophy. That's fat loss. That's lean body mass. But I work with people, multi-million dollar assets who go to the weight room well, it's funny because when I ask them that, they don't know why they go to the weight room. Uh, very often it's like, well, because, you know, I read, you know, I don't know, I want big arms, you know, which is, uh, if you're going to the weight room to get stronger, by the way, if all, if the only quality I could improve for an athlete or person, if I could only improve one, it'd be strength. Because as we usually, the, the cliche in our world is <clears throat> strength is the glass and every other quality is the liquid inside. So if you have a shot glass of strength, you really don't have a lot of liquid in there. If you have a keg, you can do a lot of amazing things, okay? Uh, you've been out with you know some of the, the, the fitness trainers we have, and, and these women can sit down and enjoy a really good meal, have a couple of beers, and still rock it on the beach 
because they've got they've got big pitchers. They're big glasses, and so you throw in some extra calories. You know they're they're not gonna, if if all you got is a shot glass, you throw in one more calorie, it spills over. You know, but if you have a keg and you throw in a a cheesecake, you know, as uh, John Berardi talked about when he went online and looked up what the cheesecake was at the place he ate, and he found out it was almost 4,000 calories. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a, a bagel here in Salt Lake. They don't sell it anymore at this one place. That's 1,100 calories. It's a chocolate chip bagel. That's well, a good you're going to have a hard time, you know, I don't know. There's a machine at the gym that tells you how many calories on the air spin bike you go like this. Yeah. And to get to 10 calories takes you about three minutes. Well, uh, 1,100 calories, I can't do math real well, but you're going to be on that chair a long time. That's a long ride. That's a lot of calories. Um, so if you're going into the weight room to get strong, come talk to me. And the truth is you don't get strong in the rate. There's a couple things you never want to do. One is miss lifts, fail. Because it's like, well, the best way to understand getting strong, uh, Tim, is like um, how you learn how to type, okay? And I can't stand next to you as you're learning to type. And I don't know if they still do home row anymore. And we learn to type with this little specific kind of thing with you, to teach your fingers. But if I'm sitting next to you screaming, it's all you, bro, it's all you, press that A, press that A you're not actually become a faster typist and pushing you to having you drink the red bulls before you try to improve your typing. None of that's going to help. You get better as a typist by typing and that's how you do it. And pretty soon I'm to the point now, I am not sure where the letters are anymore on the typewriter. Like if I have to go online and you don't have to you have to put in your account for Netflix or something and it's got the QWERTY, Yep. Uh, board. I don't know where the letters are sometimes. I'd be like, but I can type faster than anybody I know, but I don't know where the let. They know where the, my fingers know where the letters are. This doesn't. Getting stronger is like that. You have to tell the body what we want to do. And what we want to do is add more load to the bar and use that extra strength out there on the field to play or whatever we're doing. So the idea behind easy strength is first, get out of this idea that we can scream and beat you into getting stronger. We've got to, we've got to train up the nervous system to, this is what we want to do, Mr. Nervous System. We want to do this or this or this or this, and we want to do with more load. So the way you do it first is never miss, never fail, never grunt, never psych up, get in, as often as you can, like I recommend at least five days a week and you do the lifts uh, and I'll, we'll go through the, the, what they are in just a minute, the, the ones that work. And by the way, folks, you can do anything you want, but my experience with lots and lots of people and my own experiments, at least listen to me before you run off on your own. And there's nothing wrong with running off, running off your own. And what you're going to do is you're going to come in and practice Practice, I tell you, practice that lift five days a week for eight weeks. And when it feels light, go heavier, which is the hardest thing to understand. And if it feels, and one day you come in there, generally it's about day 22 for me, where the weights are almost leaping off of you, or you're pulling up and you feel like you could throw yourself into a muscle up, not do a muscle up, but toss yourself up into one. And that's the day you might want to just give a little experiment to see how you're doing. And very strangely, in my case, as an experienced lifter, doing it for 22 days, I've broken lifetime bests, destroyed lifetime bests, without having a single hard workout in 22 workouts. Wow. That's amazing. So I have done meals, to, uh, uh, pardon me, I've done workouts, Tim, where Tiff and I would be in the kitchen and say, Tiff, I got to get my, like, especially on my light days, I got to get my workout in and I'll be back in before the water is boiling. That I will have done the workout before the water is boiling on the easy days. How, do, how um, does that work? 
Uh, well, let's go through specifics. So let's go through what it, what it is. First off, it Pavel told me to do this. We met at a at Charles Staley's boot camp, and he just gave me this piece of advice. So the next 40 days, pick five exercises. Never do more than 10 reps. Never get close to failure. If it feels light, go heavy. Er. Well, that was maybe it's because I'm a Fulbright scholar. That's all I need. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe it's one time I could speak, was it three or four languages at once? Uh, maybe I'm a genius, or maybe I can follow simple directions. So, but in since that time, so it's I've had 16 or 17 years to work on this now. What we've discovered, and I'll make it even simpler for you, is there's let's just give let's make it we'll call it three rules. We'll just give you three rules. Basically, five basic exercises work: an overhead press, a pull up, or that that pull up can be a pull a chin up, or it can be a lap machine though. I wouldn't recommend that. So, so vertical press, vertical pull, a deadlift variation, ab wheels. Those four work for everybody every time. And the ab wheel folks go to TJ Maxx every January. They sell them for five or ten bucks. I buy them out. I buy them all. And then I just give them to people. Uh, the easiest way to do it is two sets of five. Because uh, we have number two, we have a rule called a rule of 10. I'm not done with rule number one yet. And the rule of 10 is you have 10 total reps in a workout. So that's two sets of five, which is by far the most reasonable. There's something magical about five reps in the weight room. And I've never completely known why, but it works. Three sets of three works very well for some people. Uh, I have this little one when I do doubles where I do a set of five, go heavier for a set of three. And then I do a reasonable double. That reasonable doubles where I usually break my lifetime best for a single for two, which freaks you out, which freaks me out with my experiences. It can also be on a light day. I ex every in the in about ten workouts, you should have one easy light day, and that'd be one set of ten with a ridiculously light amount. So um, real simple. Here's your workout. You're going to do two sets of five in the press, two sets of five in the pull up. If you have to add load, like somebody like yourself, add load. But it should be very easy. Uh, two sets of five in the rack deadlift. Uh, either one set of set ten or two sets of five in the ab wheel. Now, the fifth exercise is going to be the one that took me the longest. Generally now, I recommend one of two things. Either loaded carries or kettlebell swings. And if you're doing kettlebell swings, you're going to do 75 total reps every time. Originally, I've gone as high as 250 swings per day on easy strength. 250 swings a day pretty much makes it uneasy. Uh, <laughs> right on. I've also done it with 500 swings a day, that giving us the 10,000 swings. Right. Uh, with, and that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. Uh, my original variation for this was an easy strength protocol uh, with 10,000 swings at the same time, but that's way too much. We tried it with 250, too much, slid it down to 125. Now we're talking about a 40, 40 workouts. Yeah. Then we discovered that 75 is about the right number. There's two ways to do that, Tim. You can do five sets of 15, like as a warm up or as a finisher, or you can just do, it's a, a workout I like a lot. It's, I call it up to. So you're going to do up to 75. So maybe the first set is 12. Then you go 12 to 22, 22, you go to 29, 29, you go to 41. You know, you just, you just randomly get up to 75 and either method works just fine. Uh, if you have good swing technique. So two sets of five push up, two sets of five pull up, two sets of five rack deadlift, two sets of five ab wheel, 75 swings either as the warm up or the finisher. If you do loaded carries, this part doesn't change. At the end, you do some kind of loaded carry. And I would suggest doing something different every single workout. Suitcase carry right side, suitcase carry left side, uh, some days um, farmer walk, uh, bear hug carry. In your case, what you talk about with the crawling and things like that, loaded crawling, loaded this. 
I, I think that would be just fabulous. Okay. If, uh, if you ended with carries, do you have a certain time frame or distance that you like to go? As long as it's, every workout has a different load and a different carry and a different time frame. Okay. So one day, you know my house, so maybe one day you'd simply do the suitcase carry down to the corner and back. That's not bad at all. It's very easy. Well, maybe the next day you do a heavy, heavy farmer walk and try to go far. Just keep, you want to have that, uh, is it staccato um, in music? Staccato where things kind of have some great variation. Variation is the word I know. Um, so. Okay, yeah. So you're, you're, you're looking... You're looking to do movements with a lot of variation. So okay. on the loaded carry, um, just change it up every time and don't ever go to the wall on the loaded carry. But the the more equipment you have, probably the better. And if you just don't know what to do, folks, just do a suitcase le left hand, suitcase carry right hand every day and call it and just just do it. Because it's the it's the the important thing is that you're coming back tomorrow and doing it again. The downside of doing the same thing with loaded carries every day, Tim, and you'll figure this out within about four days, is you get too good. Um, pretty soon, you know, that little drill, I think you've done it with me, we'll walk around the block, yeah. weights. Well, very quickly, now you're up to a three-mile suitcase carry, and you've, you've, you've really just, you're, you, now it's not easy anymore. Now it's ridiculous strength, okay? Right. St stupid strength, Yeah. So that's what works. Now, someone's going to say, well, Danny, why don't you have squats? We've had tons of discussions on the Dan John Q&A forum about making it work. And to make squats work, I think because it's so complex, because you have the hip fold, you have the knee fold, you have the ankles, you have the load up here somewhere. I've never felt like anyone's actually made it work. And so uh, now it doesn't mean you can't goblet squat in your warm up. And I always recommend like a goblet squat in the warm up. Do do the squatting movement daily as part of the program, but make it a warm up. And someone's gonna raise their hand and say, How many? Well, probably 15 to 25 is the, the most. But I would argue a, a couple reps. Just I sit down and move my knees out and you know, you know, do that little movement and then stand up. You don't have to do very much. You want to keep the movement of squatting, I don't see, think it works uh, in easy strength. Now, after doing eight weeks of easy strength, certainly go do that Soviet six-week squat program and tell me which one you like better. You know, it'll be the easy strength. Easy strength for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No doubt. So um, basically, you're just using the squat then as, as movement prep. And there's really not a, a need to go high reps with it because after all, everything else is only 10 reps anyway. Is that right? A, a total of 10, right. And the idea is though, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, no, check that, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, you're in the weight room. So at the end of the week, you've done 10 sets of presses. You've done 10 sets of pull-ups. You've done 10 sets of deadlifts. When you add it all up, there's volume. But the idea is you're coming in every day every day and practicing typing. You're not trying to learn typing in one day. You're going to master typing. You're going to become a, uh, a guitar player, Tim, in one day. No one would ever say that, right? Right. I mean, you, you come back and you keep practicing. And that's, so what we're doing in easy strength is we're practicing getting strong. Uh, but here's what's weird. We still don't know exactly what happened. <laughs> Um, there's a couple ways to do it. I still think that uh, South Park did it the best. It's called the underpants gnomes, where they steal they, <laughs> one step one, steal underpants. Step two, and the guy goes like this. And step three, make a profit. And the reason I love that is because that's how we were taught about the invisible hand in college of capitalism. The professor shook his hands like this. It's also called the black box sometimes. We know this. If I lift weights, I'm shaking my hands, something happens. If I lift weights, shaking my hands, oddly, the hormonal cascade of my body happens and I put on 40 pounds in four months, as it happened to me just out of high school. I lift weights, shake my hands, 22 days later, I have lifetime bests in the weight room. So 
I don't care what happens when I shake my hands because my job is to get you stronger and better on the field of play. So don't ask me why it works because honestly, I don't care. Now, some, maybe some of your listeners care, but generally people who care a lot about how you get stronger aren't very strong. <laughs> you know, they spend so much time thinking about it, they miss the, you know, how it works. It's like, see, I look at getting strong and falling in love very similarly. And now maybe I'm the only guy in the world who thinks this way, but. Well, now I'm uh, curious. <laughs> so, Tim, uh, how did you plan to meet your wife? There was no plan. Oh, because see, I've never met someone who's in a happy relationship who has a plan. Tiff was getting set up with my assistant coach. He was worried about meeting her, so he brought me as a wingman. I got to the party, I looked at her, and then that was it. I had a life change at 29 and 51 years. It's not what I planned to do. This so, is not what I planned. I, I actually met my wife by trying to find a sweet mate of mine in college. Uh, I was looking for him and I found him. He was in her room. Uh, and when I saw her, I was like, wow. And that was it. And then I showed her some magic tricks and uh, made her laugh. And that was, that was it. That was it. <laughs> so, you showed your wife magic tricks. I, I, tell did. You. I, I actually know. I, so check this out. All right. You see this? Yeah, I, yeah. It's a, it's a fi fifty cent piece. Yeah, it's it's real. But so I showed her how to make it disappear and reappear, and wow, that's all it took. Okay, Tim, I'm gonna watch this watch this mug. Okay, ready? I'm gonna make it disappear. Wow. Oh, I know, okay. amazing. Same thing. I'm miserable. Well, those of you just listening, you missed my magic. Yeah, I also do that with a bottle of wine every night. I magically make it disappear. That is that's a good that's a good trick. <laughs> All right. So, so for me, here's what easy strength did for me. Um, it, it showed me, uh, that showing up every day, a little, like a little bit at a time mm -hmm. can go a long, long ways. Um, as I got smarter and I learned more about neurology, yes, I think it does absolutely strengthen the nervous system for sure. Um, but it also helped me understand, um, the power of numbers. So like I like to tell people, if you just want to start a, a habit or get stronger, what oh. if you only did what if you only did 10 push-ups a day, but you did it every day of the year? Well, at the end of the year, you would have done 3,650 push-ups. Yeah. And that's an efficient nervous system. That's a nervous system that's capable of doing way more than just 10 push-ups. Um, and it's really easy and it's simple. Um, so that was really the biggest eye-opening thing for me with easy strength. Um, so it, to me, it was a, a, a very much of a game changer. When you stand back after you've done it for a while, you realize that easy strength really just is the way life works. You know, if I was going to train you to be at one of my discus throwers, we would, we would easy strength your way up to the top. You know, certainly a camp experience where I have you for a week and I train you four days a week, uh, you're going to learn a lot, but we're going to stale out at four days a week very quickly. We're going to flatten out. And the only way you can get start throwing farther is by easy throwing. You go out every day and you just get a little bit, you know, you just keep wiring that system, wiring that system, wiring that system. And pretty through, pretty soon, all the excess gets washed away. Um, it's nothing you wouldn't learn from the martial arts, from Zen, uh, from... You know, talk to anybody who's ever had real life experience. I'm talking about warriors and like, you know, my, my parents' generation. These people, you know, watching my parents as a child, they could celebrate anything. Because, you know, like my dad's case, he, he watched the, in the battle he was in, it was the largest friendly fire incident in World War II. Americans killed Americans. A brutal battle. Brutal battle. Because... It was good guys against good guys. And I have a, I have a cousin who was on uh, the Arizona. And then they sent him to two other islands, uh, very famous islands. And, you know, he just was a, he had seen way too much. So these guys, when the Giants won a game, the San Francisco Giants, Giants fans, you know, they celebrated, man, you know. And uh, there's something special about watching that, where the rhythms of life, uh, they're a certain way and why do why do we in the weight room in the field of performance try to ignore those rules 
you know, give me 20 years to make you a great discus thrower and we're going to go a long ways. Give me 20 weeks, different story, 20 days, 20 minutes. I'm going to have to be really good. And I'm not that good. I, I think that's it. Like to me, life and strength is about the long haul. Um, yeah. what, what good is it in my mind to only be strong up until you're age 25? And then, so then it's the now what? What yeah. happens from 25 to 80? What yeah. are you supposed to do then? Um, and that's, again, that's where easy strength comes in because like I, I think I've told you before, I've got two, two mantras. It feels good to feel good and make the hard things easy. Mm. And easy yeah. strength is the approach that allows you to both feel good and know what it is like to feel good and to make hard things very easy. Well, it was interesting when I was preparing for that weightlifting meet where I hurt my shoulder because my frozen garage stopped my barbell from rotating. But uh, I, I asked you for help and we combined Basically, I put together an easy strength weightlifting program with original strength. And I set, of course, that at the weightlifting meet, even though I was a little hurt, I broke state records. I went, I broke state records all day long. That's all I did was break, break state records. And I'm not, you know, it means nothing to your folks, but, you know, I'm 62 and I still snatch over 200, you know. Now, I know, and that's not great, but I'm also made out of metal. So... <laughs> So, I mean, there's a hundred ways to get stronger. The way I like to do it now is easy strength and original strength. Cause I think, I think your system, and if you want to call it my system, and I'll take some credit for it. Uh, I think, I think these are, you're right. Uh, if it feels good, you, you're not, you're not getting punched in the mouth every day. Tiff even said so when I was in the middle of it, she said, you know, it, it, she was commenting. So the girls were probably 14 and 12, maybe a little bit younger, but not, not a ton in that ballpark. And I had tons of energy for them. My career, my career was going gangbusters uh, in all phases. My, I was an administrator and a coach and a professor and a writer. And everything was really going well. And I had time for everything. And that's something a lot of people can't hear until they're, they're have four full-time jobs. And then it makes more sense, you know, and I was throwing really far on a 10th of the workouts. Everybody else I was competing against were doing. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So here, here's a question for you. It's probably silly, um, but we've talked about rhythm and, and rhythms of life and seasons. Easy strength. When I was first introduced was 40 days. And I still think that's right, but go ahead. Okay. So I guess my question is, is, if I have a question about this is, is what's magical? Is there anything magical about 40 days and could you not do it longer? Well, it's funny because the, it, there are cultures uh, in the world that, don't, that, that have uh, only, there's a tribe in the Amazon that only has three numbers. One, a few, and many. And that's the three numbers they have. And they have no they have no color for red, they have no color red. They, they that that the cut the blood is blood, you know. Um, but where forty comes from in our in our number system is, you know, actually, you know, it is biblical, but uh, people miss it. The the time frame at the time was based on uh, six, which is why that we still have the three hundred sixty degree thing. We have sixty minutes in the clock, sixty seconds, and all that. So that comes from the, the 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 land between the rivers, Babylon, you know, Babylon, Mesopotamia. But desert tribes, people who live in the desert, uh, the counting system they use is forty means a lot, and it, what it means is you go through your fingers and your toes twice, and after that, so you count up to ten on your fingers, up to twenty on your toes. Sorry about that. That's good. Another set of ten, you know, up to thirty on your fingers. Once you get to forty on your toes, ah, eh, you know, four. How long did they wait? Oh, they waited forty years for it. Oh, how many? It was, it was a long time. It was forty. So forty, in, especially in scripture, just basically means a long time. But as a strength coach, what's nice about forty? That's eight weeks, which is a workable amount of weeks, five days a week which is a workable number of training sessions if they're all reasonable. And when you work those two things together, you know, 
five times eight, you get you, you, you get you get the 40 weeks. I have had people tell me they've done the 40 days in a row, and I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm nothing wrong with it, but I, I always thought that having the day or two off a week was was. I'm about to say better, but that's not what I mean. It, it seems to be more workable. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Yeah. That, or realistic. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a, I'm a big believer that it wasn't this way early in my career, but even if even if the training is 14, 15 minute workout sessions, having that day off always seems to make life a little better. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, just just that just cleaning the head out a little bit. Yeah. I think it helps you because it also allows life to happen. Um, there may yeah. be days that just can't get there, legit legitimate reasons anyway. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, 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 there's, I'm not sure the 40 is magical. In my case, I have never gotten much results. This, that doesn't mean it's wrong, but after about 20, 25 workouts, I, there, it's almost time for me to change things up. But I've always, I always tend to go through the 40. Uh, I've done 40 days with kettlebells only, 40 with barbells only. I've done a number of experiments, and... Um, I think the thing that's best is that for 40 days, here are the five things I'm going to do. And I, I know this, you know, this from my, in my daily shark habits. If, if I spend the rest of my life, uh, it's funny. I was just, just before you called, I was already getting coffee for tomorrow morning ready. And it's, you know, it's an early afternoon here in, in Utah and I'm already thinking about tomorrow morning and my to, to do list. It's just, it's just interesting how, once you start getting into this idea of that the habit is far more important, um, how do I say that? Uh, most people I work with, you are, Tim, the culmination of all the habits of your life up to now. Yes. I am the culmination of all my habits. The reason I was able to retire, basically, at, I think when I first met you, I was already technically retired, right? Yes. Yeah, I retired at 52 as a high-paid uh, religion teacher here in Utah. Uh it's a joke, okay? Uh, but the reason is, it was I, I've, I've always had the habits of being debt-free, of, you know, I own things. I don't, I don't have big mortgages. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's habits. These are habits. Uh, I exercise five days a week because I've been exercising five days a week since 70 or 71. Before that, I only lifted three days a week and that, you know. So uh, it's just it's just what I do, and everybody I know knows that Thursday is Tonic Thursday, where we go into my garage and do Tim Anderson's original strength. Everyone knows that. That's just a good day right there. Well, but it's just got a lot of Thursdays. That's that's what we do, and when you have habits like that, after a while they start to carry over into real fun things. After a while, like you know, fairly healthy life and big guns, you know. Right on. So, uh, thank you for the easy strength explanation. Um, before we go, I've got another question for you. Um, if you want to talk about it, you mentioned to me right before we started uh, the show that you had one of the biggest insights of your career today. Yeah. How so? so? (laughs) One of our guys, Quentin Q is getting his doctorate. He's going to be a, uh, a physical therapist. So he's getting his doctorate in that, you know, I think it's called DPT. I think. Yes. And uh, he asked me an honest question. He goes, um, he goes, what do you think of physical therapy? And I go, you know, I don't mean, to, I go, and it's the typical Dan John thing. You know, I don't want to be a jerk. You know, I know you're spending all this money getting a doctorate. But basically, I think it sucked, you know, because they, there's such gaps. And so what happened was, is as we're talking, I'm going to give you the whole thing, if that's all right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me just uh, see if I can move this here a little bit. So, um, as we talk here, I'll, I'll, I'll go over it uh, in, in, in the most depth I can, okay? Well, they're very good. Physical therapists, Tim, are very good at step one. That's ambulatory care. That's if I'm in bed, roll me over so they can wipe my back off of, so I don't get bed sores. Uh, they're very good about giving you a walker. Uh, they give you that heightened toilet so you can sort of have a bowel movement, but you're 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 nothing's in the right place um and then the next step that they're pretty good with is that basic daily so step one walkers 
rails. I need, I need someone around all the time to help me. They're very good there. Okay, Danny, we're going to do this exercise here for your wrist. Okay, very good. And then they're pretty good about gliding you off to the next stage, which is kind of the basic daily living. You know, and I, I'll be frank with you, uh, Tim, I still use stair, uh, stairway rails all the time because I'm, I got titanium legs and I, at the back of my head, I fear, right as I was recovering, um, someone rang the damn doorbell, which as you know, freaks Sirius Black out. So I'm going down the stairs and Sirius undercuts my legs and I hit the, you know, at the bottom, there's that, the wooden stump. The band. Yeah. And I thought I broke my ribs. I hit it so hard. Oh. And, and I thought I'd gotten my hip out of joint because it hurt so bad. So there I am. My dog is barking at this person. I'm in terrible pain at the bottom of the stairwell. I was not yet ready to go run a marathon. Then I was barely able to walk. But with some accommodations, I could have stopped right there and lived alone for a couple of years. You know, I can get to the toilet by myself. I can get into the kitchen by myself. I'll have to fight that stairwell. But that's not much of a living. What we agreed with at lunch today was step three, which is increasing work capacity. And I came up with, a, I think, a bit of a brilliant question. Of course, I think I'm brilliant, so I have to be careful here. So you went to the grocery store. And it's getting ready for Thanksgiving, Tim, okay? And so you bought uh, 18 bags of groceries. We're talking a lot of groceries, including the turkey is in one of the bags, okay? So you have 18 bags ranging from 10 to 20 pounds. Once you open your door in your house, you have 10 steps up to your kitchen. How do you go about getting those bags from your station wagon, your van, the back of your car, into your house by yourself up those 10 stairs me currently right now yeah if they're plastic bags i'm gonna slide each of my, my arms through all those loops and i'm gonna walk up their stairs with them and open that door <laughs> you're gonna do a 360 no, no that, I, funny thing is i think this thing <laughs> it's somewhere between a 200 and 200 and 360 pound carry I was taking your 180 pounds. I was taking your 10 pounds per bag. I didn't go well, to the turkey. Remember, you got turkey. The turkey weighs 23. You got those cans of cranberry sauce that uh, weigh 18 pounds. So there's some variation. But listen, what you just told me is that work capacity is a matrix. Now, if you decide to do carry up every one of those by themselves because you're not strong, well, you're going to do 18, 180 s stairs. Yep. If you decide to do the Tim Anderson way with the 300 pounds of bags up the stairs for 10, it's only 10, but you're going up with three, 300, whatever. And what I loved about this particular question, Tim, if you're following, is that real life has these work capacity matrices too, matrices also. And we do this in real life all the time. So as a physical therapist or as a strength coach or a fitness trainer or whatever, one of the things we can do to this person who's gone from ambulatory to basic daily living now is have the conversation about the 18 bags of groceries and the 10, and the 10 stairs. Because no matter how you answer this problem, one at a time, 18 flights, which would be a fair amount of work, or one with the 300, which is a fair amount of work. That's life in a nutshell. Yep. And I found it, it's like it would just, so for me, when I'm doing the prowlers in the gym, which is the very best thing you can do for a total hip replacement recovery, as I've discovered, that and goblet squats and uh, my friend Tim's uh, rocks, those three, are the, those three are the money. But every time I'm pushing that prowler, I'm pushing up the number of grocery bags I can carry the next time I come back from Thanksgiving shopping. And then from there, so we've got ambulatory and basic standard living. I call those the red lights. Those are the red lights. That means you're always looking for a rail. You're always looking for, you know, like you can ask my friend Mike Rosenberg about the time 
we, we had to walk around uh, Chicago with, when I had my necrotic hip. And he said, I was like a, a hawk looking for the next place to sit down. You would remember how much pain I was in, yes. right? Yes. And then yellow is the work capacity time. We're still not in the clear yet. And maybe yellow is where you're going to be the rest of your life. But then there's green. Number one would be fitness. <clears throat> That's some task you might pick. I want to climb that mountain. I want to do this thing. And then on top of that would be what I call performance. <clears throat> and the difference between performance and fitness in performance, someone calls your name out and you have to step forward. So on a fitness task like climbing that mountain, if it's raining, we just push push it off another day. At the nationals, if it's raining, it doesn't mean anything. You get in the ring and you throw or whatever you got to do. So it's ambulatory, basic tasks of life, work capacity, fitness, a little goal you want to do, and then performance. And by the way, performance can also be, can be when the when the stage director says you're on, and the spotlight hits you, and then you do your dance. And the reason I wanted to talk about this so much is that that 18 pounds, the 18 bags of groceries question, it just resonated with me as a 62 year old, and it resonated with me as an athlete, and it resonated with me as someone who's coming up on the one year anniversary of a total hip replacement because 18 bags of groceries up, <clears throat> up 10 stairs is a question that many of our listeners deal with of some kind every day. Yes. And I just liked it cause it was, it was a real world strength coach question. Yeah. So I'm glad you, you allowed me to share that with you. No, that's awesome. That's very good. Um, man, uh, Dan, this was a, this was a lot of fun for me personally. I'm selfish, uh, yeah. but thank you so much, um, for anytime, anytime being on the show. Um, got one last question for you and then I'll let you go for real. Ready? Yeah. All right. Crunchy or creamy peanut butter? Which one? You know, I used to like crunchy better, but I have discovered in the last few years, I like creamy better cause I can do more with it. And that makes a lot of sense. Okay, uh, that's a good answer. Yeah, you, can, can you, can, you, can, you can flatten it out on toast. or I got to tell you, I learned this from Jeff Hemingway. I think you might have met Jeff, my brother-in-law. Uh huh. Putting peanut butter on hamburgers. Game changer. Folks, laugh all you want until you put that peanut butter on that hamburger. And then uh, you're welcome after you try it, okay? It I, is amazingly good. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, uh, thank you now. And I will try it, uh, later. <laughs> as it, soon as I can. It, 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 you know, you have the mustard mayonnaise and ketchup on one side, you put the mayonnaise on the other side of the bun and it, it, it makes it, I don't know what the synergy is. I put cinnamon sticks inside my chili and, uh, and pull them out right before serving. I don't know what the cinnamon stick does, but it makes it better. I don't know. It's the synergy of it. I don't know. I, uh, I guess I need to watch a Ratatouille another time to figure it out, you know. So to sum it up, you don't know what peanut butter does to the burger, but it makes it better. You don't know how 40 days of 10 reps per easy strength does, but you know that it makes you stronger. Right. So basically the day's lesson is it doesn't matter how the light works. It just matters that you know how to turn on the switch. And much of life, it helps. Right on. When it comes to most things that make us human, that middle part is le here's questions you don't want to ever ask or have answered to you. Uh, TV shows do it sometimes. Write a list about why you love your wife. Oh, that's now, hard. Don't do it. She, you'll give her the list of 74 items and she'll find 40 things you didn't put on there. Don't ever ask. I mean, you know, you'll be at a thing one time. You look at a couple together, you'll say, I just don't see it. Well, that's not your job. Uh, in areas, I've always discovered certain areas of life that uh, life, love, and lifting, they just, sometimes you just got to go with this works and don't don't ask why. I mean, I used to work with this, uh, a football coach. He'd always ask me in the middle of a game why I thought a play would work in offense. And I'd be like, 
no, no. I, I finally had to tell him, shut up, because my brain was processing literally 10,000 things. And to come out with why uh, would ruin the processing. It's like getting back to the 18 bags of grocery question. You're going to come up with an answer to it. I might make four trips because the turkey bag was going to rip. So I put that back down. Well, or the person next to you says, well, I'm going to carry the turkey bag. The turkey bag rips. You turn. When you turn, all the glass bottles throughout. you got those shattered bottles on your front deck. So uh, don't ask why. Just do or don't do. There is no try. This is the way. Yes. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, brain exploded. <laughs> For those of you who missed that, folks, that's The Mandalorian, and which I love. And there's a new episode tomorrow morning. Best show on TV. That's All right. right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Dan John. This lesson and episode was brought to you by the wisdom of Dan John. Thank you very much. And we don't know why. All we right, buddy. Just See you soon. See you soon. All right. Thank you, sir. Take care. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of the Original Strength Podcast. If you made it this far, thank you so much.